Welcome back to another episode of the House Husband Diaries. As always, I am your host, Carter C. And today, I'm doing a video for, at the request of Ariel's Ark, why the treasure chest is hidden in New Mexico. And this would be why I believe that the treasure chest is hidden in New Mexico. And for full disclosure, I do believe that it is in New Mexico. It still do not have a saw. I'm working on it. Hard, hard, hard work. A lot of effort. A lot of effort working on the coal, trying to figure it out. But I'm going to tell you why I think it's in New Mexico. I'm not sure if I'll do a series of why it possibly could be in Montana, Wyoming, or Colorado. Uh, but I will do this one and, and then see where we go on this on this topic so we're a little derivation a little bit of uh, an aside from the themes but this is why i believe that the treasure chest is hidden in new mexico so personal bias that's where i believe it is and i will try to factually back it up but also um, whether it's fact or it's it's just maybe high probability is what i should say so there's a, there's a greater than 50% chance. There's a the majority of logic would say that it's in New Mexico. And my reasons are, for number one, Forrest Finn built his legacy in New Mexico. So it just makes sense that if you build your name and your legacy where everyone knows who you are, that you would want to cap that legacy off by doing your sort of swan song, your last hurrah, the treasure chest, hiding it, that game in New Mexico. It's, it doesn't make sense for him to hide it in a place that has less connection to his present day, what he's done in, in, in his adult life. So everybody, so, so let's go, so we'll go. It's what you do in your experiences in childhood most of the time are less relevant to who you are as a person, what you've accomplished, unless it's something negative, right? You don't hear about really successful people in business let's talk about their childhood and th th because they don't think about their childhood. They think about the future. They think about their business. They think about how they're going to help people. They think about, you know, whatever, the, the, who, the circles that they run in today. You don't hear, the, successful people don't dwell on the past. They're always looking, you know, to the present and, and future. They're looking at the present and how what their circumstances are and how they can improve them, how they can make them better. And they don't go back in their childhood and, and, and dwell on things and say, oh, you know, it'd be really neat if I just did something in my childhood. It's not typically how it works. I'm not saying Forrest isn't doing that with this chase. I just think the probability of, of him hiding the chest somewhere when he was 12 or something where, where he found the place when he was 12 is, is less likely than what, what a place that he found and a place that he enjoyed as an adult to escape some of the stresses and rigors uh, of running a multi-million dollar business. You can probably hear that in the background. My dog was sleeping nicely about five minutes ago, 10 minutes ago, and we got him a new toy yesterday. So now he is, uh, decided to wake up and become aggressive with a little crinkly thing. So maybe he'll chill out or maybe he'll get more rowdy, rowdier. So let's, uh, let's keep going. So childhood stories are fun to reminisce about. They're fun to share. And even the name of the book, The Thrill of the Chase, a memoir. It's a memoir. So you're, he's going to talk in the book about things that happened early in his life. That's the point of a memoir. So if he didn't spend time as a, as a child in 
in New Mexico or Colorado or, or Wyoming. And it, he just drove through Wyoming, that's the story. Then it makes sense that most of his stories would be about West Yellowstone and Yellowstone and his time there fishing. Yes, he continued to fish. Yes, he continued to go up to that area. However, he didn't talk about those times as much as he's talking about his, his childhood, the memoir, and he's using the stories about school and other things. I, I just don't think that he would he would hide the chest in, in Yellowstone or West Yellowstone. Um, he's telling us those stories because that's his memoir. It fits. His legacy is the big picture, in my opinion. Time, history, what are we saying about life and death and success? Those types of things, looking at the big picture. Because Forrest has said, look at the big picture. To add on to that, he says, and this is from the New Zealand interview, and in my book, there are several hints that won't take you to the chest, but they will help with the clues that are in the poem. He's also said, there are subtle hints in the book. Let's see if I can get the book. One of these days, this dog is not going to calm down, I promise. It's the kind of dog we got. So, oh, we found the squeaker. Well, we might have to redo this one. What do you think? What does he say? Oh, I know. Page 133. I thought it was in the jacket. It's page 133, right? So, page 133. There are also other subtle clues sprinkled in the stories. Other subtle clues. Clues. He says subtle clues in the book. Not subtle hints. He says subtle clues. In interviews, he said subtle hints. Anywho, the subtle hints in the book would be, by definition, subtle, which means not outright. He would not outright tell us. It, but he's saying Yellowstone. I spent all this time in Yellowstone, West Yellowstone. I spent all this time there. I spent all this time there. That's not subtle. That's saying, hey, you know, come here, look at this place. I think a subtle hint is something that would be, you know, underneath, underlying, saying, you know, here's this kind of story, here's a lesson I learned, here's an experience, and those are going to be a couple of themes coming up. Education, experience, teaching. What is he saying in, in, in the story subtly that would lead us to, to where the treasure is, is hidden. So I think the overt stories of Yellowstone, West Yellowstone, Montana, you know, searching, I don't think that's subtle. And I think it's more of a distraction. And I'll leave it at that. Third reason. Just sheer distance. I know that Forrest had a plane. He was a pilot. So theoretically, he can get to Montana and Yellowstone, and he has multiple times sitting on the board. But basically, every one of us who's looking for the treasure chest doesn't have access to a plane. We have to uh, buy a plane ticket to get out there from North Carolina or somewhere else. Or we have to drive 2,000 miles. Other people are closer, yes. But I don't think it's, it, it just doesn't, it makes less sense to fly 900 miles. It's from West Yellowstone to Santa Fe is about 900 miles driving. It doesn't make sense from a proximity standpoint for forests to hide the treasure chest 900 miles away. We're 500 miles away if he can hide it in, you know, crazy rugged land or public place that's something that's 100 miles away or 50 miles away. 
one for his his own at, at 79 or 80 most people aren't doing 900 miles just to go hide a treasure chest and, and come back that's a 1800 mile give or take 2000 uh you know 2000 mile journey to go hide a chest and come back and say hi you didn't know that i was gone 2000 miles i just did 2000 miles i mean even if you have a plane that's a that's a heck of a journey and a heck of a plan. I'm not saying he couldn't do it. It just, there's less credibility the further you go from home. That, that it would be hidden there. Even if he has a lot of ties to the air, it's just, it's less likely. I'm not saying it's not there. It's just not as likely. Both for hiding the treasure as well as for the person who finds the treasure chest. Because we don't know if the person who finds the treasure chest needs to contact Forrest. Now, yes, in today's technology, you can send an email, you can send pictures, you can do all of that stuff via email. But I imagine if Forrest is still alive when the treasure chest is found, he said he'd buy the, the, the bracelet. I imagine that the finder of the, of the chest would want to meet Forrest and that Forrest would want to meet them. And I would imagine that they would love to have coffee or, or a beer or whatever drink they should or should not have and reminisce and talk about how they found the treasure and how they set up the treasure, you know, hunt and the poem and, and, and all. I imagine you would want to have that conversation and not on the phone. And if, if you're a person that doesn't have a plane, which most of us don't, and you're up in Montana or you're up on the Canadian border or you're up in Yellowstone, which is basically Montana, and, you know, you're 700 miles away, I mean, that's, that's a 12-hour a drive, at least. I, I just don't, I don't think you, I just don't think when you find the treasure chest, I know he wants you to go home for 30 days, whatever, but I imagine, let's be honest, I'm, somebody's going to say, I found the treasure chest, Boris, let's, like, let's meet up, you know, and he's going to be like, calm down, uh, isn't that cool? But you would just think that there would be, there'd be some contact between the finder and the and, and Forrest, and and he didn't think necessarily that it would last this long. We're in year ten now, or starting year ten, or whatever. I don't know exactly when the when the anniversary is and the date, but it just the closer in proximity to where he lives, to Santa Fe, is is just more plausible. And then the last thing I'll say, and I'll get out of here for for today, you know, of why I believe. The fourth reason why I believe that the treasure chest is hidden in New Mexico is he only had a thousand copies of the first printing of The Thrill of the Chase back in 2010. Now, selling a thousand books in Santa Fe, because he, he gave exclusive rights to the bookstore in Santa Fe, only had a thousand copies made, it would be unusual to make that stipulation and to print so few number uh, of, of books of copies such a few number of copies if you were hiding the treasure chest a, a thousand miles away wouldn't you want a thousand books printed in santa fe a thousand printed in denver a thousand printed in well like four in wyoming because nobody lives in wyoming but sorry for the 400,000 of you or 500,000 of you that live in Wyoming. That's a giant state for only a half million people. And then, you know, some in Bozeman, Montana or something, right? I mean, like you would think that there would be books put in each state if there was a possibility that it was in other states. Because you're trying to get people to get out. You're trying to get people in Montana to get out. You're trying to get people in Wyoming to get out. You're trying to get people in Colorado to get out. You're trying to get people in New Mexico to get out. I don't think so. I think it's in, in New Mexico because he only had a thousand printed. It's only in Santa Fe, and it was in the mountains north of Santa Fe. In North Carolina, let's let's just say I live in Atlanta, Georgia, because that's the southern terminus of the uh, of the Appalachian Trail, but of the Appalachian Mountains. So if it if I live in Atlanta, Georgia, and I say, I don't, I mean, and I go hide a chest, and I say it's in the mountains somewhere north of Atlanta, I'm thinking North Georgia. Maybe kind of the South Carolina, North Carolina, 
Tennessee tri-state region along with Georgia, so the quad state region. Maybe. Maybe those states. It's not in Maine. You're not going to Maine to hide something, you know, if, from, if you're in Atlanta. You're not going to Vermont to hide something in Atlanta, even if you went skiing there all the time. That's just not likely. Because you have places to hide in your own backyard. And, and you care. The, the, the people up in Maine and Vermont get outside anyway. The people in Montana get outside and Wyoming. They get outside and work anyway. It's the people in cities that don't get out, right? So, you know, people in Denver need to get out. I'm kidding. I mean, whatever. If you live in Denver and you go mountain bike, don't complain. Uh, it, it, it just doesn't make sense. The number of, of, of copies that he had made and where they're situated, where and, and, and how you get a, a copy is strictly in Santa Fe. I just don't think it lends to itself to the treasure chest being hidden in Wyoming and Montana. And now that he's found a squeaky toy, the other one, I'm going to call it quits for this video. I said everything that I wanted to say. I probably could have, have gone on uh, for longer, but this will be a good place to stop. If you have any other comments, questions, thoughts about New Mexico, why it is or isn't in New Mexico or another state, put it in the comments. Let me know. Love to bat back and forth the idea. And um, yeah, thanks so much for watching. Subscribe. And uh, maybe one of these days, you know, we'll make another appearance. So hope you all have a great day. House Husband is out.